in this uh, lecture we will see about the uh, stationary state and their uh, linear combination this is revised and updated one i have already uh, given one lecture on stationary state here i am uh, in addition i am going to give about the uh, linear combination of uh, stationary states this is revised and updated one now we will see the separation of uh, wave equation the Schrodinger equation is ih cross partial derivative of uh, capital psi x t this capital psi uh, represents the uh, wave function depends uh, both on x and t so we are taking partial uh, time derivative of this wave function which is equal to minus h cross square over 2m uh, delta 2 uh, psi x and uh, x and t over uh, delta x2 plus v of x uh, psi uh, which is a function of x and t here you should remember that this vx is, is only the function of uh, depends only on the position not on the time so that uh, assumption we are taking up uh, now you substitute this uh, you separate the wave function into two part that means the capital psi x of, uh, x of t x and t is equal to small psi of x uh, multiplied by small pi t in the above equation here uh, psi depends only on x and pi depends only on t so we are separating the wave function into two parts one is the uh, position part and the other one is the time part now you replace here in the left hand side uh, since it's a partial time derivative there is no uh, time dependence on psi so we are differentiating only the pi similarly in the left hand side you can see this uh, psi depends only on c we are taking uh, partial derivative with respect to x so uh, naturally the psi alone depends on x uh, so we are taking pi outside because there is no position dependence on pi uh, so now you divide this above equation by capital uh, psi uh, which is a function of x and t which is equal to psi of x and pi of t so if you and divide this uh, by uh, the, the total wave function that is psi x pi t here psi x psi x will get cancelled because we are dividing by this factor so only pi uh, pi of t remains as psi of x cancel out similarly in the right hand side uh, the psi of t will get cancelled you, you will get only uh, sorry, pi of t will get cancelled. You will have only uh, uh, psi of x. So, with this understanding, we will move further. Now we got this expression that is i h cross uh, 1 over pi uh, the partial derivative of pi with respect to t is equal to minus h cross squared over 2m delta 2 psi over delta x2 plus v, uh, v of x psi of x uh, the whole thing multiplied by 1 over uh, psi of t. Uh, sorry, psi of x, psi of x. Uh, you can see that uh, this left hand side purely depends on the time t, and uh, the right hand side purely depends on x. So, if you are changing the time, uh, it will affect only the left hand side. The right hand side uh, uh, does not have any effect because there is no time dependence. So, uh, naturally. 
sim in similar way if you change x only the right hand side will uh, change uh, it will not affect the left hand side so naturally uh, both will have a common constant uh, that constant we are designating as e that is the energy uh, we can prove it but right now you take uh, that constant is e so you first take the right hand side which is equal to e uh, then you bring this uh, psi of x to the right hand side then you will get the schrodinger wave equation uh, minus h cross squared over 2m uh, now remember that here i have uh, converted this partial derivative into full derivative because it's uh, purely depends on uh, x there is no time dependence so i have uh, converted this partial derivative into full derivative so that also you have to keep in your mind so uh, if you bring this uh, psi of x to the right hand side you will get minus h cross squared over 2m uh, t2 psi of x over tx2 plus v of x psi of uh, x uh, which is equal to e uh, psi of x this is the schrodinger wave equation that is time independent schrodinger wave equation there is no time dependent in, in it then you take the left hand side that is i h cross over pi uh, t pi t uh, over t t here also i have uh, converted this partial derivative to full derivative because uh, here all parameter depends only on time so partial derivative will become full derivative this left hand side as i said it's exactly equal to by uh, taking the left hand side we call this expression i h cross over pi is equal to t pi over t t which is equal to e now you bring this pi to the right hand side and i h cross also to the right hand side this i h cross uh, can be equivalently written as minus i over h cross uh, so uh, simply if you uh, uh, multiply and divide by i you will get i squared is minus one so this will become plus and here you will have i, I h cross so generally when i h cross uh, if you plot the i h cross to the other side it will be written as minus i over h cross then the equation for pi of t is uh, readily integrated to q pi of t is equal to a uh, e power minus i uh, e t uh, over h cross uh, if a uh, is is normalized then a is equal to 1 if it is normalized then it can be simply written as e power minus i e t over h cross uh, so the total wave function can be separated into two parts as i said psi of x uh, pi of t so now we got uh, the value for pi of t is this exponential term so uh, this can be written as psi of x small psi of x e power minus i e t over h cross uh, from the above wave function uh, that is from the, this wave function you can uh, write this uh, that is if you uh, differentiate this that is you know psi total wave function which is psi of x e power minus i e t h cross if you differentiate this expression with respect to time uh, in fact this is a partial derivative because it depends on both x and t so i h cross partial t psi by t t uh, is equal to uh, i h cross uh, uh, that is uh, this i h cross i am keeping as it is if you differentiate uh, uh, the total wave function with respect to t uh, psi of x uh, there is no time dependence so i am keeping as it is uh, then uh, what about the exponential term this exponential term if you differentiate you will get minus i uh, e over h cross 
So that I have written here, then uh, that exponential term I am keeping as it is. Now some modification. Here this H cross and this H cross will get cancelled. Similarly, this I here on another I, I squared is minus one. So this will become plus. So here the left out term is only E. E uh, and uh, this remaining thing. This is the total wave function. You know, this is the total wave function. Uh, psi, capital Psi of uh, X and T. This is a total wave function. You can see it here. So this will be equal to E uh, capital Psi. Uh, so just now we got this equation. That is I H cross partial time derivative of capital Psi is equal to E capital Psi. Psi is the total uh, wave function which depends on X and T. So we are taking partial time. This equation is called eigenvalue equation. Uh, you know, this blue color is an operator. A parameter shown in blue color is an operator. That is I H cross delta over delta T. When it acts on the capital Psi, it gives the energy eigenvalue E with it is wave function capital Psi. Uh, so that is, this is the uh, wave function. Uh, so this is the eigenwave function, we can say. Uh, so this eigen function, when this operator I H cross delta, uh, delta over delta T act on the wave function, it gives uh, the eigenvalue of E. This is the eigenvalue E. Uh, so this uh, psi, capital psi is called eigen uh, function. As I said, this is called eigenvalue equation. Uh, so the operator, energy operator is I H cross delta over delta. We have also seen that uh, minus H cross squared over 2M uh, delta uh, 2 over delta X2 uh, capital Psi X and T uh, plus V of X into Psi uh, X and T E, uh, which is equal to E psi x and t. In similar manner, what I claimed here, psi, uh, capital psi x of t is also eigen function of the operator with the same eigenvalue. That is, uh, you take uh, psi, uh, capital psi as a common, then remaining thing is minus h cross squared over 2m delta 2 over delta x2 plus v of x. Uh, this is the operator. Uh, you remember that this is uh, called Hamiltonian operator. We have used uh, quantum mechanics very frequently about this, uh, uh, this Hamiltonian operator. Now we will see the significance of the separation constant E. Uh, we have taken that uh, total wave function capital Psi, which is a function of X and T, is separated into two parts. That is, it is equal to Psi of X. We have seen throughout this lecture, Psi of X and the uh, time uh, term, time dependent, E power minus I E T over H cross. Uh, this is the radial part, this is time part. Now you take uh, Psi star Psi. So now Psi star is... Uh, uh, that is a small psi complex conjugate. Psi star is uh, this plus will uh, minus will become plus. Psi star multiplied by psi. So here uh, your psi is this one. So psi I am taking as it is. Then uh, since this exponential term is a uh, constant, you can bring back and forth. So I have brought this uh, to the uh, this after this uh, psi of x. So this will become uh, psi star x psi of x e power uh, uh, minus i e t. This I have brought to the last because it's a constant so you can change uh, the constant. Uh, 
you are not supposed to change the order of the operator, but you can change this. So here e power uh, minus theta into e power uh, plus theta i theta is this will be equal to one. You know very well. This is equal to one. Uh, then uh, this will become psi star uh, psi capital psi star uh, psi is uh, modulus uh, psi squared. Similarly, this small psi star uh, psi is equal to modulus uh, psi uh, psi of x whole squared because it is exponential term will become one. See here in the right hand side you have time dependent, but what about left left hand side? There is no time dependent. Uh, so both are uh, equal. That is the probability of finding the particle is independent of time. There is no time dependent. So an energy eigenfunction like the capital psi in the above equation is said to be represent as yes, stationary state of the particle. Uh, since uh, the modulus uh, square of psi is a constant in time. So that is the significance of the uh, separation constant. This is the case for a uh, single wave function. Now we will see what will happen if you take uh, the uh, linear combination of it. That is the important point in this, uh, in this lecture. Uh, just now we, we have seen that uh, the probability of the finding the particle Apart the wave function psi, which is a function of both uh, position and time, is uh, actually the probability is independent of uh, time for a single wave function. Now we will see what will happen if there is a linear combination of two or more wave function. We will take a simplest case uh, that uh, two stationary states. Uh, suppose a particle start out in the linear combination of just two stationary state, uh, capital psi of x at time t equal to 0, that is important, t equal to 0, is equal to a1 psi 1 of x plus a2 psi 2 of x when time t equal to 0. Uh, we have just now seen even when time t equal to 0, if it is a single wave function, it is the probability is a time independent. Now we will see this. Uh, because it's a single wave function is time independent, we are calling it as a stationary state. Here, uh, this is at time t equal to 0. For a particular time t, then it will be written as rewritten as a1 psi1 of x e power minus e, uh, e1 t over h cross plus a2 psi2 of x e minus i e2 t over h cross. So this is the uh, linear combination with uh, time. Uh, if it is single wave, wave function, uh, as I said, uh, it is a uh, probability is independent of time, so it's called stationary state. Uh, now we will see what will happen for the linear combination. So now you take the modulus square of this wave function, then you take modulus square of uh, first wave function. That is, this will be a1 square, psi1 square. Because if you take complex conjugate of this exponential term, e power minus will become e power plus, so that will become 1. Similarly, for second one individually, it is a1 square psi1 square. Because this is uh, minus e power minus i e to t uh, h cross, if you take complex conjugate, this will become plus. So if you uh, multiply e minus t into e plus t is 1. So this also individually 1. Now you multiply this and this because you are taking the modulus square. Then uh, this will become uh, a1, uh, a2, psi1 star psi2. So psi1 star, uh, this will become uh, plus e1. So uh, I am uh, rewriting psi1, uh, psi2 is minus e2. So I am uh, replacing the exponential term e power minus i e2 because this is automatically become minus e2 
this will become plus e2 because already there is minus outside minus of minus will become plus so this can be written as when you do the cross multiplications uh, wave function one and two then a1 a2 uh, psi1 star psi e power minus uh, i e2 minus e1 t over h cross similarly uh, if you take this psi2 psi1 if you multiply this uh, that is psi1 multiplied by psi2 st star so you take uh, complex conjugate of this one if you take complex conjugate of this one e2 will become plus so uh, this exponential term uh, e power i uh, e2 minus e1 so uh, times t over h cross this is the uh, modulus uh, square of the uh, total wave function now we have seen this uh, equation uh, you add last two terms that is uh, third term and fourth term that is I will use different color so we will add these two uh, then uh, because here uh, psi 1 and psi 2, small psi 1 and psi 2 purely depends on position. So psi 1 star is equal to psi 2. Similarly here psi 1 star, uh, psi 2 star equal to uh, psi 2. So we can take a1, a2 and psi 1, psi 2 as common factor. a1, a2, psi 1, psi 2. Uh, so th then you can take this exponential term. So this is a replaced by this one. We have combined the third and fourth term. So here, what is e power minus i theta into e power i theta? That is equal to 2 cos theta. That's what I used. I used the fact that this is this third term, except a1, a2, psi1, psi2. Uh, this uh, thing, this bracket times in the curly bracket is equal to 2 times cos uh, e2 minus e1 uh, t over h cross. So you can see first term independent of time, second term independent of time. What about third term? Third term is an oscillatory one uh, because it, there is a time dependence. So here the omega is equal to e2 minus e1 over h cross so it uh, it will have the oscillation with the frequency e2 minus e1 over h cross uh, this is the uh, angular uh, frequency uh, so naturally the linear combination of two stationary state is not a linear one it's a oscillatory one uh, this you cannot call it as a stationary state if you take these two separately, then it is a stationary. If you take li linear combination, then it is a, not a stationary, it's an oscillatory one. Uh, so now we will see what is this A, uh, A1, A2. Uh, so uh, we will see what is A1, A2 uh, and their input. Uh, just now I told you that A1, A2 are the probability amplitude. The uh, total wave function can be written as a linear combination of so many wave function with uh, probability amplitude An. This can be written as summation over N which is uh, between 1 to infinite uh, An of An uh, times psi N uh, which is a function of X and T. This uh, psi, uh, capital psi n can be written as small psi n, which is a function of x. Uh, that's what we have seen so far. Uh, multiplied by this exponential uh, that is a time dependent term. Uh, so uh, now, what is the expectation value of Hamiltonian? This an, the square of this uh, probability amplitude is probably model square of the probability amplitude is uh, basically the probability amplitude is a complex number so model square of that gives the probability uh, that is the 
expectation value of common Hamiltonian, that is total energy, is equal to the summation of uh, n is equal to 1 to infinite uh, modulus a n squared e n, uh, where a n uh, squared modulus a n squared is probability of finding the particle at the nth uh, state. Uh, so each state we have by a particular property. For example, E1 you will have particular property, E2 at uh, some other property, E3 at uh, some other property. It will go on. So each energy state will have some uh, probability. Uh, so um, naturally the total probability must be equal to 1. Summation over 1 to infinite modulus A n squared is equal to 1 because total probability is 1. Now you can understand the probability amplitude. So which gives you the probability of the finding the particle at a particular energy state. Thank you very much for watching my video and supporting me continuously. Thank you.